I don't know if you've ever heard of the financial review. I'm pretty sure it's just Peter Costello sending private messages to people as it's even more secure than a phone line as no one reads it. It's essentially a special interest magazine masquerading as a newspaper. It's like antiquing monthly or modern fishing. The Finn Review should just rename itself Costello's Corner. Mark Latham once famously said the Liberal Party's a conga line of suck holes and if that's the case, the writer of this particular article, Joe Aston, would be at the very end of that line sucking up the majority of the solids. Defending Malcolm Turnbull's broadband. That's kind of like defending George Pell. It violated the entire nation and everyone knows it. Clearly triggered by an article in another publication that no one reads, Junkie, who for once in their miserable existence published something that wasn't Yes, tripods are sexist. Yes, I want the name change to Tampods. Thank you. In it, Kevin Rudd outlined how Malcolm Turnbull ruined NBN purely so Rupert Murdoch could continue to make money off of showing repeats of Storage Wars Canada, which I will admit is a fair consolation prize for not having developed world broadband. Wow. This is mystery. Just as a refresher, Labor's NBN was fibre to the premise. It covered 90% of Australia, would have delivered speeds of 100 megabits per second, and all for the tidy price of 37 billion. Then along came Mr. Bigger Picture, who to this day, I can't tell if that title's ironic. I made an entire stand-up show about that man's life, available at friendlygeordies.com, and even I'm in two minds about whether or not to waste a video on reviewing his autobiography. Let me know in the comments, should I do that, or just watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians and shit on it. To give you an idea of just how bootlegged Malcolm Turnbull's mark was, if this was Kevin Rudd's legacy, this is Mr. Turnbull's. It's still kind of a vehicle, I guess. His broadband plan used the same technology they used to deliver telegrams. That's right, the technology that should only exist in museums was being sold by Malcolm Turnbull as the road of the 21st century. And it cost 14 billion more than Rudd's. It's currently delivering average speeds of 43.4 megabits per second. That's not even half of Labor's. We're almost 50% below the global average. We're being beaten by countries that actually use this as a car. 62nd in the world. And what's even sadder is that in many places, the existing copper telephone network is faster than Malcolm Turnbull's NBN. Damn. The king of innovation being beaten by a network that was rolled out by people who use the phrase cat's pyjamas to describe something that's the best. Joe Aston tries to defend that, which is most definitely not the cat's pyjamas. His very first point, are you ready for this, is that Labor's original plan was basically Malcolm Turnbull's. What he fails to mention is Labor then chucked that plan in the trash, Turnbull picked it up out of the trash, slapped it on the chamber's table, still with a couple of cockroaches f***ing on it, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what Joe Aston is defending. Discarded trash. He then goes on to claim that Labor's plan would have cost 43 billion, which Joe, first off, can you stop looking at first drafts and assuming it doesn't get any better than that? Definitely gives us an insight into why your articles have so many mistakes in them, but their estimates kept going down, while Malcolm Turnbull's estimates for his dog shit broadband to quote high five kept going up, up, up into the sky. 51 billion. That's still 8 billion more than your Liberal Party wet dream, you 70s serial killer. He then goes on to, I think, hope that his audience is so old they get confused by words like hybrid, because what he's saying is borderline illiterate. So before we break this down, just as a reminder, Frankenstein was also a hybrid. Remaining premises have been and are being connected variously via fibre. Which is like saying some people fly first class to London, that is technically true, but in general, as part of, I think, some sort of Kevin Rudd cleansing ritual that they learn from the other side of the door, they're torching as much fibre as possible. Copper? The whole point of Labor's broadband was to replace the copper network. The same network that delivered the Burt Newton show into Australian homes, at much faster speeds than it's currently delivering hot ones. Ethernet. Ethernet? That's like saying your house is being connected via Wi-Fi. Even I feel justified in calling you a troglodyte. And this is coming from someone whose phone is this. 
Ever wondered how I film my TikToks? Well, I guess this raises more questions than it answers, doesn't it, kiddies? Foxtel and Optus's hybrid fibre coaxial, which is great, if you live in Malcolm Turnbull's house, which you don't, because you're not Malcolm Turnbull, it's a technology that is almost exclusively reserved for the rich. It's like penis pumps in the 70s. Fixed wireless and satellite. Hmm. And how's that going, Joe? Oh, whoopsie daisy. Only 10% of NBN fixed line services do not receive speeds of at least 50 megabits per second. Which even if that wasn't a lie, you're bragging about speeds that are slower than Trinidad, Tobago, Moldova, the Ukraine. The only metric we should ever be beaten by the Ukraine in is how many civilian planes have been shot down over our airspace. Only 10% of NBN fixed line services do not receive speeds of at least 50 megabits per second. 50 megabits per second is only true on the clearest of days at 4.12am when everyone's fast asleep and every planet in the solar system is in perfect alignment as the average download speed is actually 43 megabits per second and and most standard NBN packages are delivering 30 megabits per second during peak hours. That's why normally to do editing notes with my editor who lives in Wollongong, I usually use this can with a string attached. How am I doing, Connor? No worse than usual. Perfect. Aren't you getting tired of this pattern, Australia? Just once, I'd like to wake up and say, yay, we're beating countries that are run by cocaine lords in one area. But just like everything else, from environmental management to the economy, we're getting trounced by developing nations under liberal governance. In fact, we have the fourth slowest broadband speeds in the OECD. We are getting beaten by Greece, Turkey, and Mexico. Dios mio. The Communications Department's 2014 cost-benefit analysis determined that the actual cost of delivery of Rudd's plan was between 59 billion and 73 billion, and we bet that was a low ball. And the only reason you do bet that was a low ball is because you're a slime ball, Joe. That panel he's quoting was an all-star cast of the only people on Earth that would benefit from a broadband network that would be the envy of Yemen. Tony Shaw, whose greatest accomplishment in life is that he privatised Telstra. Ooh. What a patriot. Telstra, of course, owning the copper network. Henry Argus, an economist that campaigned against net neutrality in the US, so he just sounds like your run-of-the-mill Atticus Finch. He's also a regular columnist for The Australian, so no, I see no reason at all why a Murdoch hack would want to trash Rudd's NBN. There were no broadband experts on that panel. It was just wall-to-wall -wall experts in mauling public services so big business sharks can feast off the carcass like a dead whale. And out of that panel of hammerheads, Gee whiz, wouldn't you know, these business and liberal party shills created a report that found exactly what business and liberal party shills would want to find. Using that cost-benefit analysis as a source is so ridiculous, Joe might as well have said, Rudd's plan would have cost all the money in the world. Source, dude, trust me. Finally, as no hit piece on the NBN would be complete without claiming that Rudd's a conspiracy theorist, he then goes on to claim that Rudd's a conspiracy theorist, stating that Mr. Rudd has no credible evidence that the NBN was a commercial threat to Rupert Murdoch. This is coming from a man that just published an article riddled with objective mistakes, and he's asking for credible evidence. Mate, lower your bar. What about this filing to the US Securities and Exchange Commission? What about the fact that Abbott and Turnbull announced their hunk of shit broadband plan on Foxtel? And speaking of credible evidence, what about the fact that you make the claim Rupert Murdoch wouldn't have been threatened by the NBN as he'd proven to be capable of adapting his empire to the net and the example you use for that is MySpace. The butt of every social media joke made over the last decade, bought by Murdoch for 580 million and then sold to that other media mogul, Justin Timberlake, for 35 million. So if I may steal a phrase from Bill Maher, okay, new rule. Anyone with the name Joe that currently holds a position in the Australian media landscape must be banned. I get it's all propaganda, but at the very least, can we have propagandists that are talented? Like this video if you agree that Malcolm Turnbull's legacy is just a go-lo knockoff of Kevin Rudd. And be sure, because we're talking about broadband, to leave the inevitable joke of, I tried to like this video, but the net Please share and comment below. Command.